nostalgia is a potent force in the world of entertainment. It can make audiences look back on films, novels, and TV shows with rose-colored glasses, and can also heavily inform the decisions made by studios today. When brought together at just the right time, they can create a movement felt far and wide. Today, we're seeing a very particular type of nostalgic return to the decade of the 1980s. And while the 80s have been heavily influencing pop culture in various forms for many years, the most distinctive and immediately evocative form has come in a resurgent subgenre that can be summed up in the single image of kids on bikes. While that may seem like a rather generic idea, once placed in the context of a story that harkens back to a bygone era, it becomes incredibly specific. The modern kids on bikes subgenre is defined the most by the Netflix television show Stranger Things the 2017 film adaptation of Stephen King's It, and Brian K. Vaughn's comic book Paper Girls. These three stories seek to recapture a sense of 80s childhood wonder that translates coming-of-age stories through encounters with the supernatural. Why Kids on Bikes? It's a moment that can be seen throughout all three of these stories and almost immediately recalls some of the most evocative ideas of the family-friendly films that defined the 1980s. From a societal standpoint, the 1980s is often seen as the last decade in which kids felt a sense of freedom to go off and do whatever they want, far from the eyes of parents and without the fear of strangers felt today. While that may be more or less true in reality, it is certainly the case when it comes to the films of the decade. And where nostalgia is concerned, representation is far stronger than reality. The idea of a group of kids having an adventure completely on their own, free of adults, recalls the idea of a simpler time one free of modern technology or societal fears, but one that can feel relatable to the audience, even if they never had a similar experience. The question is, why now? Nostalgia always lags a couple decades behind, giving those who grew up in the time in question enough space to age and experience different phases in life until they long for a simpler time within their youth. While there are many causes behind today's very specific 80s-focused movement, including the lucrative nature of capitalizing on the nostalgia of modern audiences, this unique subgenre is being told by creators who were at a formative young age when the idea of kids on bikes adventures first arose. To name just a few, these types of stories can be seen in Steven Spielberg's E.T., Richard Donner's The Goonies, Rob Reiner's Stand By Me, and Fred Decker's The Monster Squad. So what exactly is the storytelling formula of a classic Kids on Bikes narrative? First, have a group of young friends go about their daily lives in an idyllic suburban neighborhood, getting into trouble and slowly approaching a natural time of change within their lives. This change can come in the form of puberty, the divorce of a child's parents, or the kid's neighborhood being permanently altered in some form. In Goonies, we see this in the kids knowing that their Oregon neighborhood is about to be bought by a corporation before they embark on a treasure hunt. In Stranger Things, it's our group of four Dungeons & Dragons loving boys growing up in middle school who soon lose a member of their group to the Demogorgon. In The Monster Squad, it's a kids club who love old monster movies, only to be faced with said monsters in real life. Next, throw in an outsider who is adopted by the group and sets the entire plot in motion. This can be an alien, like E.T. and E.T., or an E.T. ripoff, if Mac and Me is more your style. Someone with psychic powers, like Eleven in Stranger Things, or a supernatural event as a whole, like the sudden crossing of dimensions in Paper Girls, or the coming of the evil Pennywise in It. These exterior forces create conflict and expose the protagonists to the larger world even if they never leave their hometown. In fact, they should probably stay in the place they grew up. Change typically comes to the protagonist in Kids on Bike stories, whether they like it or not. The narrative will eventually lead to a confrontation with the villain, who most often represents a form of authority, like the government agents in E.T., Super 8, or Stranger Things, or a monstrous encapsulation of youthful fears, like Pennywise and It or the Demons of the Gate. These stories can even have both, but in any case, our heroes must somehow overcome their foes with little or no help from adults, but done for the sake of, and help from, the outsiders who have come into their lives. Finally, the resolution of our conflict should lead to our characters accepting a new phase in life, 
transitioning into a type of adulthood themselves, even if the adventure has only lasted a few days at most. In doing so, both protagonists and audience members can accept that childhood doesn't last forever, but growing up doesn't mean forsaking the sense of wonder and excitement found in our youth. Stand By Me has our narrator reflecting on how his life and the lives of his friends permanently changed because of their journey to find a dead body. E.T. closes with Elliot saying goodbye to his extraterrestrial friend and clearly having been changed by his experiences. In any case, life is different for the protagonist in an irreversible, coming-of-age sort of way. Steven Spielberg's E.T. stands as the most influential piece of this subgenre, with its template of a group of young children in an idyllic suburb taking an alien friend under their wing, and in the process, growing up, hitting all the marks here. Of course, it's scenes and posters that feature the image of children on bikes, taking off on their life-changing adventure, have been burned into the subconscious of mainstream audiences for decades. To be clear, there are many modifications that can be made to this formula without breaking it. The town doesn't have to be wonderful, as seen in the clearly problematic dairy main of It. The kids don't have to be in elementary school, as is evident in Paper Girls. The plot catalyst doesn't necessarily have to be supernatural, in the case of Stand By Me. And the adults can be more or less involved, as is most obvious in Midnight Special and Stranger Things. However, a large portion of these plot and character elements remain in place, and make new entries into this mini-genre obvious to audiences in search of a nostalgic adventure. It's the Duffer Brothers' Stranger Things in particular that has most encapsulated the modern Kids on Bikes movement. By placing an emphasis squarely on the 1980s and making numerous references to the influential films of that time period, the show makes sure that its audiences know exactly what type of story is being told from the very beginning. By translating the stories typically told on film into a multi-season series, Stranger Things has naturally subverted some of the hallmarks of the genre, while still giving audiences the kid-focused supernatural nostalgia trip that they want. By the mere nature of its medium, this story of coming of age by encountering the supernatural has made the process of growing up more realistic by having it play across years rather than days. In addition, the beloved character of Eleven has become a far more well-rounded and dynamic young girl instead of a plot device. These alterations help further establish the kids on bike subgenre by making noticeable diversions and often predictable paths. In writer Brian K. Vaughn and artist Cliff Chang's Paper Girls, we see a comic book take on the Kids on Bikes tale, with the story following a group of teenage girls who are suddenly pulled into a science fiction adventure while out delivering newspapers in the early morning. The difference here is that with most films and television shows set in this specific subgenre, protagonists must return to what is normal within a two hour runtime or by the end of a season. But Vaughn is telling a much longer and more unpredictable story within Paper Girls quickly altering the entire world of its heroes and sending them on a journey through both time and space, with no clear-cut resolution yet in sight. However, the hallmarks of the 80s and the adult-free, coming-of-age focus of the narrative are still firmly in place, despite its twisting and turning story structure. Paper Girls isn't the only current comic book to play off this new wave of 80s nostalgia. Joe the Barbarian, Birthright, Plutona, Lumberjanes, Afterlife with Archie, and We Can Never Go Home, are all using the iconography of kids on bikes to greater or lesser degrees. It is perhaps the strongest example of how much this 80s nostalgia trend has permeated modern pop culture. As an adaptation of one of Stephen King's most famous works, Andy Muschietti's It updates the 50s setting of the original novel to the 80s, keeping intact much of the book's ideas and kid-centered narrative while tying it more heavily into the subgenre popularized by Stranger Things and its ilk. The change was a success bringing together King's cachet in the horror genre with the current zeitgeist for big box office results. Also, today's nostalgia for the 80s greatly reflects the nostalgia felt for the 50s seen during the actual decade of the 1980s. In both, we see a longing for a simpler time 30 years prior, a feeling ingrained in the creators coming of age and bringing their childhood to the masses through the stories they tell. Although most of the modern entries into this type of story have been brought to life within the last few years, it's important to not forget about J.J. Abrams' Super 8, which predated the Kids on Bikes subgenre movement by several years by overtly homaging the works of Spielberg through its small-town alien adventure. Its success at the box office, as well as its shortcomings that result from an almost too faithful homage, likely helped set the course for the many stories that followed.
While this period of 80s love and pop culture permeation of all things 80s childhood may become passé eventually, it's fascinating to dissect how such specificity and love for the thrills and wonders of a bygone era can capture the imaginations of both creators and audiences so thoroughly and in all mediums. Every generation longs for the far-gone simplicities of youth, and the tales that were ingrained in them at an early age will always inform the stories they create as adults. For today's audience, it's found in the simple image of a group of kids facing the unknown on their own. While the iconography may change in the years to come, that spirit of wonder and adventure will always speak to the child inside us all. <laughs>